Good morning. It is indeed an incredibly awesome presence to be here with you. Um, as uh, Pastor Dwayne, I want to express my deepest thanks for him to reach out to me to have this opportunity and, and Pastor Kathy to share in this 46th anniversary. David and I joined MCC in October of 91. And so we've got a lot of his, and that was back when we were on over on M, M Street uh, in the old townhouse. How many remember the townhouse? <laughs> oh man, yeah, it, wow, a lot of. So um, again, we're overwhelmed and grateful to get to be here to share with you. Invitation to transformation. The problem with the first word, invitation, is that it gives us the option, the choice. An invitation is extended, and you and I have the prerogative, whether or not, to accept. The invitation to transformation is especially scary <laughs> because what if I'm comfortable with the status quo? What if I like it the way it is? To accept an invitation, the one that is extended to us in the second chapter of Philippians as was read a few moments ago is <laughs> the invitation is being spoken, is being shared to the Philippian church by a guy that's behind prison bars. So you're inviting me to join you in a path and in a process that could potentially end me up like you? The invitation is radical, it's revolutionary, and it is subversive. So you and I must be very, very, very careful if indeed we are going to accept <laughs> this invitation. I'm, I'm an old KJV Baptist, I'm sorry. Um, uh, have this mind in you. The version that was read a few moments ago said, have this attitude in you. Oh man, you're going to start off asking us for an attitude adjustment? Ah. <sighs> Have this mind in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Though he was in the form of God, when was God, he did not count equality with God, a thing to be clung to, a thing to be grasped. But instead, Jesus em Deed himself and suffered humiliation and even subjected himself voluntarily to death and death on the hideous, heinous cross. The text then goes on and says, but God, therefore God has highly exalted him and given him a name which is above any other name and every other name that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, every tongue confess in heaven and on earth and above the earth, and over there, everywhere. <laughs> that he is Lord. Okay, so let's, let's look 
Let's look closely at what this invitation is because we've just kind of reviewed the reading. Uh, the, the Apostle Paul behind prison bars does say, I need my, I need my bibble. Excuse me a second. Excuse me. Uh, there in, oh, here, just let me grab a program because you, you printed it in the program. Yeah. Um, The mind of Christ, the attitude of Christ that is being given to us as an example is that there be no competition among you, no conceit, but everybody be humble, value others over yourselves. Each thinking of the interest of others before our own. I'm reminded of right here at this juncture of John 3.16. Y'all say it with me. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth him should not perish but have everlasting life. So the, the, the benefit of belief is joy, peace, and everlasting life. But in order to receive that benefit, I have to be willing to think of everybody else before me. Oh, man, that messes me up. The, the, the proclamation that is, is being declared is that if I want to be fully in Christ and have the mind and attitude of Christ, it begins with humbly placing the needs of everybody else before me. Y'all tell me that ain't revolutionary, radical, and subversive. Because just think about it. If each one of us really did that, I mean, I mean seriously. Okay, let, let, let's reduce it. Okay, if five of us did it, just five. And, and I'm spending all my time and energy making sure that you're okay. And that all your needs are being met and that you and I are reconciled and that you have peace and joy and the unconditional love and grace. I'm, I'm all of my being is in, fully engaged with proactive energy to make sure that you know the fullness of God's joy. If I buy on to that, Independent of whether you buy on to it, that's really scary territory, y'all. Because most of us have this implicit condition, conditionality thing going on. I'm going to be nice to you as long as you're nice to me. I need to be loved. I need to be appreciated. I need, come on, y'all. The invitation to transformation begins with the emptying of ourselves. I, don't, I really have to wonder how many of us are willing to do that. How, how many of us are willing to empty? Because the joy, the power, the peace the, the wonder happens is because when, when Christ emptied himself, the passage then goes on to say, therefore, God has highly exalted. Most of us in our daily lives and in our careers, we're too busy trying to get ourselves exalted climb up that ladder of success and uh, achieve and attain and, and establish success for ourselves. I ain't got time to wait on God to exalt me. 
I got to get what I got to get for me now. Have this mind in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. The Apostle Paul throughout his letters was um, very adamant about pushing the concept of followers of Christ being in Christ. In Ephesians and in 1 Corinthians and in, in, in each of his letters, he makes the point, I don't, I don't want you to, to just know Christ and love Christ. I need you to be in Christ. In Christ. What in the heck does that mean? To be in Christ. Well, well. If, if indeed we embrace and we choose to believe his birth, his death, his resurrection, his ministry of other-centered love, if we choose to be a follower of that way, of that path, to be in Christ, okay, now y'all get ready for this, is to empty yourself so much that you are Christ. Be Christ. So I need to back up a minute and look at this Philippians passage again because when Apostle Paul is saying, have this mind in you that is in Christ, he is actually challenging and inviting us to be Christ. Okay, excuse me, I need to look at my papers. Oh, here it is right here. I wrote myself a note so that I wouldn't forget this. Um, Say the word kerygma. Kerygma. Kerygma is, tra- yeah, kerygma is the proclamation of the good news of the gospel. It's the, it's the preaching. It's the proclamation. Okay? So there are three stages that I believe that kerygma needs to, that we need to deal with today in this accepting or deciding to accept the invitation to transformation. Uh, I can hear Kathy and and Dwayne preach and sit there and go, I can hear it. And that's wonderful. My ears are having a good old time. But then charisma is more than just hearing it. It is joining in the proclamation, being willing to share that proclamation. So not only am I willing to hear it, I'm willing to buy into it and share it with others and be a proclaimer. All right? Ah, it doesn't stop there. I can hear it. I can even proclaim it. But wouldn't it really be even better if I was it? So when Paul says to be in Christ, his invitation to us is actually be Christ. Please note the distinction between being an imitator of Christ and being Christ. We're talking a leap. I can be an imitator of Christ, like the old uh, do what Jesus would do buttons back in the day. Remember back in the day, the old do what, uh, do what Jesus would do buttons? Remember? Uh, yeah, that, that's great, be an imitator. But being, if I choose to be an imitator of Christ, I can do it when it's convenient. Huh? <laughs> I can pick and choose when it's expedient for me. <laughs> oh! But if I have the audacity 
to say, oh, no, I'm going to completely empty myself and allow the fullness of Christ to exist and consume and penetrate. And that's why I love John 3.16 so much. Because of that one little two-letter word. For God so I want to be able to love you so much. I don't know how I love you. No, no, no. The invitation, the transformation is saying that I love you so much, which then implies that something next is about to happen. Right? That I'm willing to let you kill me. Because that's what God did in Christ. God said, I love you so much that I'm going to become incarnate, become flesh. And you're not going to be able to take it, so you're going to even kill. And I'm going to let you kill me, but then I'm going to get up on the third day and show you and say, see how much I loved you? <laughs> So the transformation, the transformation begins with empty, yielding. Huh. And even allowing ourselves to be replaced by Christ. Are you ready for that? Are you ready for that? The benefit is wonderful. Because the Apostle Paul's here in, in, in Philippians 2, he says, and the peace of God that passes understanding. Anybody need some peace? The peace of God that passes understanding, will keep your heart and your mind and allow you to live. I, I, I really believe we're able to claim joy. We're, we're able to claim the joy of life when we have the peace of God abiding and reigning within us. I didn't get time to do this. I'll probably have to do this at the 11 o'clock service. I wanted to spend a little time on that. This second chapter of Philippians, verses 5 through 11, is a hymn. And that there are several examples of hymns in the New Testament. And you know, you remember stuff better when you can put it to music. I remember when I was a kid, somebody taught me the presidents to the tune of Yankee Doodle Dandy. Washington, Adams, Jefferson, Madison, Monroe, Adams, Jackson, Van Bruen, Harrison, Tyler, Polk. You know, okay, <laughs> you, get, you get the idea. Be able to sing all the presidents to a tune. When you have the tenets of your faith, oh, I, and, and we can all relate to this is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Everybody knows that amazing grace, how sweet. When, when, you, when you got a tune to sing it to. <laughs> and so the, the first century Christians had Philippians 5 through 11 to some kind of tune. We don't know what it was. But to be able to use as a, as a reminder to themselves that I've got to every day be like Christ, to be Christ, to empty myself. And God will do the exalt. So, God gave you free will. 
God gave you and I free will. We can choose. The invitation is extended. Will you be me? How many times have you and I heard and said that the best Bible anyone could ever read huh, is the one that they see? Huh? So if I accept the invitation to be Christ, to be love, to be unconditional love, to be peace, to be it. That's why they're da y'all's dance. That was wonderful. It, you had the Bible in your hand. And I'm asking us that we take it to the next level and be that living word. Wherever we go, such that the transformation, when it is manifesting itself, is each one of us out blessing one another. Would you pray with me? Transform us, O oh God, into you. If any one would be in Christ, we are a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new is come. Be in us, O oh God. Help us to yield completely to the fullness of your love. Amen.